any of this mean anything to you? Hey everyone, I am Tamor and I am joined by Chris Hayner. How's it going, Chris? Uh, it's going fantastic. I've seen new Batman footage. Yes, we have been trapped in the fan dome and oh unexpectedly, it's been pretty cool. It's been good. I love it. Yeah, so one of the big things um, that we got as part of the Fandome DC event was a first look at Matt Reeves' The Batman. We got a trailer and we got a lengthy breakdown of uh, his kind of thinking on it. Um, and we're going to do a quick reaction to the trailer and then talk about some of the things that we he said and we took away from it and mm -hmm. generally our feelings from it. So first things first, Chris. Yes. The trailer. What did you think of it? I loved it. It feels like street level, not aliens coming from other worlds to destroy us all Batman. And that's exactly what I want. Also, it feels weirdly kind of true crimey in a way. Like it had a Zodiac vibe to it. Yeah, for sure. I think that's that's one of the things that I'm so glad that they have now, thanks to the Matt Reeves project. DC seems to be this kaleidoscope of themes and, and kind of tone and... You know, they're, they're going back to old movies to try and make them better. Fool's errands, if you ask me, but fair enough. But <laughs> I'm glad that they kind of have one thing to, to for Batman to anchor itself on. Or, or fans that might be a little bit upset with the kind of like mix and match, pick and mix nature of DC's things. That this feels like a good kind of like anchor for gritty pe uh, people who love the old school gritty style of Batman. Mm -hmm. Almost, it feels like... This might be stretching a bit. It feels like a graphic novel, if you get what I'm saying. I a absolutely. It's, it's the. I feel like it's the Batman. Like, listen, I love Ben Affleck. I love Batfleck as much as I'm not a huge fan mm. of those movies. But like, this feels like the Batman. Anytime they announce a new one, this is the movie we want. It is. Yeah. A. It looks like he's doing detective work. B. It's it's gritty, but not in that way where everyone's like, oh, it's so gritty and dark. It's. It feels dirty and grimy. And yeah, it old. reminds, it kind of reminds me of, remember when they did, I believe they were called Earth, I think, was it Earth One? Jeff Johns did kind of like a, a return to the Batman um, mythos early days and kind of rebooted it with, you know, a little grittier style, mm -hmm. uh, uh, earlier Batman or Bruce Wayne. Alfred was a little more like rough and ready military person. Mm -hmm. It gives me that kind of vibe. Um, so I'm glad we had, th we have that to kind of, ground Batman a bit more and like you said um, early days uh, story so it should be interesting um, the way they interpret it so what are the things that kind of stuck out to you from this trailer uh, the biggest thing for me was how front and center the mystery of the Riddler is uh, I know we're getting a version of Penguin we're getting a version of Catwoman and we're getting Riddler I did not realize that Riddler was seemingly based on this is sort of the main villain and it is not Jim Carrey's Riddler at all. Yeah, and I'm so excited. that It's one of the things that I never realized until watching this trailer. Like, not a lot of people have done Riddler. And if mm -hmm. they have, they very rarely stray from the over-the-top cartoonish version of Riddler. Of course, we have Paul Dano um, playing the Riddler, Edward Nygma, in, in this movie. Um, and it seems to be very much a, a more grounded kind of version of him again i'm gonna make a comic book reference but the scott snyder run with um the riddler being the main focus uh for early days batman was all about kind of like a meeting or a battle of wits and minds between bruce batman and the riddler and it definitely feels like this is the case here so mm -hmm. um the setup in the actual trailer that we saw is the riddler seems to be leaving a trail of bodies and effectively yeah. letting yeah letting Batman figure out what's going on, but there's also an element of the Riddler trying to expose something about Batman. Yeah. Um. What did you think about that? Um. I like that it it's so often with the sort of the rogues gallery of Batman villains, it's like no, they're bad guys. Batman has to stop them. A rid like it's not often that you would see a Riddler with a personal vendetta of wanting to expose the Batman for one reason or another. That's exciting. Like that is that is a personal investment as opposed to like no, the Riddler like does crimes and leaves like riddles behind. Like so I'm very into it. Yeah, the every iteration that we see that isn't that kind of like version of Riddler is usually like trying to prove he's smarter than Batman. Whereas yeah. this seems like it's more of a case of, you know, 
as, as Matt Reeves says during the panel, this is an experiment for Bruce and Batman. It's like a, he, he characterizes it, Matt Reeves characterizes it in the panel where he's talking to Aisha Tyler as a criminology experiment yeah. in Gotham. Like he's he's accepted that Gotham is screwed up and crime is, is kind of like taken root in the city. So he's just trying to figure out things to kind of uh, de-seat that kind of, uh, the poison and, and see if he can root it out. And the Batman experiment is part of that. Which is really interesting because one, it means that the film gets to explore the psychological side of Bruce and, mm -hmm. and also his, his ambition, but also give it a foil to really test his resolve. And I feel like that's a really smart way of taking the Riddler's shtick and making it work for Batman mm -hmm. instead of just being this kind of, you know, wrecking ball that occasionally appears in Bruce's way to challenge him on that kind of stuff. Well, and like throughout the trailer, we saw the word liar painted or written on a number of things and like clearly feels like that is directed directly at Batman. So mm -hmm. like I I can see a world where in his mind, Riddler sees Batman as no better than himself and he wants to expose that sort of fraudulent side of him to the world because as, as much as we all love Batman, he's also a dude who is not uh, in any way officially a law enforcement officer, but is it going around and breaking legs and doing a lot yeah, of very sure. bad things? Yeah, I'm, I'm really caught up in that in the use of liar because he uses it a bunch of times and I'm wondering like what what does that pertain to? It could be a simple matter of like the Riddler wants to expose like the true nature of Batman mm -hmm. in the same way that many other villains have tried to do, but it's also it could be something that's more like matter of fact he did something or something has happened within Gotham City that is is like he's trying to expose and Batman is a, he believes a a part of that because we have to remember there are other people at play here like Carmine Falcone is yeah. in play um Selena Kyle is in play Oswald Cobblepot is in play like there's more going on Although the Riddler is definitely pushed front and center as the main villain, there are others. And who knows whether... I get the feeling, I don't know about you, but I get the feeling that those characters aren't in this to kind of do that traditional Warner DC thing to like create pathways into future movies. And they feel like they are placed in there because they matter to the story. Do you get that feeling? I get the feeling that yes, they're important to the story. Also that they're important... The, the thing with a lot of these movies, I feel like it's all a means of like... You look at a Justice League, it's like, okay, from there we can do an Aquaman, we could do a Flash, we could do a Wonder Woman. You could branch off to all these, but same thing with the Avengers movies. This, listening to Matt Reeves talk about this movie and the Gotham TV show that he's looking to build out of it, it's all about enriching the world of Gotham and making it feel sort of more well-rounded and fleshed out. And Batman's villains never really go away. So it's like, I, I do not expect like the Riddler to die. I, he'll, at most, he'll probably end up in Arkham when all is said and done. But like, it may, like, sort of working these very massive characters into the story, it just makes that world of Gotham A, bigger and more lived in, It but it also just makes it more interesting to me. Yeah, and another way it does that is kind of like, it does allude to, I don't know, maybe if we're reading too much into it, but there were a lot of people, or a lot of thugs, <laughs> wearing Joker face paint there. A lot obviously, of interesting face paint going on in this yeah, movie. Yeah, obviously no indication that Joker is involved in right. this in any way. Um, at the same time, it feels like it could, one, be a fake out where, you know, they want us to believe um, that the Joker is in play or will come in the future. But I also feel like it's like just what you said, like the Joker could already exist somewhere. Mm -hmm. And this could just be a group of people that Batman beats on at some point. And it doesn't really mean that Joker is an important part of the story. It just means that you you know, as, an, as the audience, that the Joker is also around. So there's way more weirder things happening in, in other parts of Gotham that aren't the focal point for this story. Um, the other thing we have um, that I thought was really cool was Jeffrey Wright, who, um, I mean, Universe fans will know we've talked at length about as because he is part of, you know, um, Westworld and we did Westworld breakdowns and that playing Jim, Jim Gordon. Um, what did I you think of his slight I, performance there? Uh, we did. We didn't. We saw we saw some of it. I can't wait to see more. I love Jeffrey Wright and I'm all for like I like him as Commissioner Gordon is a very exciting idea like i i think it's gonna be cool um but yeah i can't wait to see more and i'm very interested in seeing uh sort of what the dynamic between him and young 
fresh out of the gate Batman is like. Yeah, because there are kind of like uh, hints at their the kind of strained relationship to start with that Batman and Gordon always have. And like you said, this is a year two story mm -hmm. and it always starts off with them not trusting each <laughs> other um, and inevitably ends up with them coming to terms with the fact that they need each other to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in one, seeing that play out and seeing if Matt Reeves and team put a spin on it because they seem to be doing that for everything else in this movie. Um, including selena kyle um what was your take on seeing her they talked about her not being a major presence she, they, well and they and what what uh, matt reeves said during the panel was that she's not catwoman at this point um which i'm i'm assuming we'll at least see her like lean that way by the end of the movie she's probably i i gotta believe she's probably a just a burglar or something to the to that degree in this film um i don't know what to make of it but like i know I know Zoe Kravitz, and Zoe Kravitz is fantastic, so mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what she does with that. But at the same time, uh, Oswald Cobblepot, uh, as we learned in the panel, is not a criminal kingpin yet. He hates being called the Penguin, which he kind of always hates being called the Penguin. But mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to see what Colin Farrell does there, because that is a guy who I never would have expected to see playing... A, playing the Penguin, but B, have such a major role in a Batman movie as the bad yeah. as one of the bad guys yeah uh, i agree there's lots of other characters that you see kind of briefly show up um in in the trailer but it doesn't focus too much on it mm -hmm. uh, on them like you have uh bill sarsgaard's character um district attorney gil colson is briefly like referenced in there um con o'neill's uh, chief mackenzie bock um as well as a few others, but by and large, this is a setting up of the Riddler versus Batman. Um, we've talked about the Riddler. Now it's talk time to talk about, obviously, the Batman, Robert Pattinson. Ooh. What did you think? Uh, I love that they put, there was an abundance of shots of brooding emo Bruce Wayne in this trailer. Uh, mm -hmm. But like, I, lo I really like the suit. I like, I seeing the suit in motion was very, very cool. Cause, like, I think before all we'd seen was that very red image of it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like the way it looks. It looks different than all the other suits, which is about all I can ask for at this point, as we're like 17 or 18 Batman into the live action portrayal of this character. Uh, and it also feels very much like a year two Batman look between the suit, the car. The car just looks like a souped up Mustang. Yeah. Which, it, that's great. The the suit, uh, as a huge fan of the Arkham games from Rocksteady and WB Montreal, it reminds me a lot of their design. And um, there was like a midpoint between um, the, the kind of uh, three games or four games where the suit was more like uh, functional and designed around mm -hmm. Batman being very live and combat heavy. And then by the end of Arkham Knight, he's outfitted with gadgets and that kind of stuff. And it looks bulkier. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes sense that one, that the design looks similar, evokes that kind of um, style, but also that it is, it seems more like a biker's kind of like outfit. Um, it being an early iteration of that. But like you said, I really like the vibe that he's got. Mm -hmm. It feels like he's, because you got those scenes where you mentioned where he's very emo and he's like, I think that's him wearing the bandana and looking really sweaty and like yeah. black eye makeup. Yeah, and the black eye like, makeup shot is perfect. Yeah, that's it's like want. straight up black parade stuff, isn't it? Like he's just <laughs> finished listening to like My Chemical Romance or something. <laughs> but like that part of it, like you can see some sort of like desperation in his eyes. Like mm -hmm. he's trying to, and he's like watching a press conference happen and it's not the stoic, I know exactly what's happened. I'm thinking five moves ahead, Bruce. Right. Um, you get a bit of that but then you also get like the savage bruce um and batman um where he beats up that joker thug it's not like precision strikes it's a brutal beatdown, and then he replies with you know i am vengeance I'm vengeance um, and that is like using that specific phrase is got to be deliberate like batman has proclaimed himself to be many things like i am vengeance i am the knight is like the classic one from yeah. the animated series but in the comics is you know he says everything from you know i am justice to i am whatever it may be so the fact that they picked vengeance specifically mm -hmm. as his like descriptor says a lot he's and a lot about his mindset um he's not about go go ahead. Uh, do you know what else it says to me i like mm -hmm. his bat voice 
It's very good. Yeah. I haven't been able to say that for so long. I like wow. the bat voice. It doesn't sound like he's putting on a voice. Mm -mm. Like it like Bale sounds like he was putting on a voice. Yeah. Um, and same a bit with the more recent versions with Ben Affleck. This feels like he's like almost channeling his rage into it. Yes. Like he's ho almost holding back his normal voice mm -hmm. to be this new bat voice. And it definitely felt menacing when he said it and as he had just yeah. whooped ass. So I was like, man, this is cool. Well, and um, that, that was one of my takeaways from this trailer as a whole. Like, there were parts of it that were legitimately scary, which I don't, like, I don't really expect in a Batman movie anymore because we don't really get stuff like that. But uh, yeah. the opening shot with the guy, the, the duct taped face uh, and mm. like scenes like that, the way, the way Pattinson says, I'm vengeance. Like, yeah. like there were, like, I got some chills watching this thing and that was very yeah. cool. The chills is what I I haven't had in any Batman since maybe Dark Knight, um, mm. and that's that's a really good sign to me. And I think the thing that I really stuck with me is I found Pattinson as Batman to be quite imposing and scary, but without that necessarily being the objective. Mm -hmm. Like with uh, Ben Affleck's Batman, he felt imposing, but it's because Ben Affleck was built like a tank. <laughs> He's barrel he chested. Was, yeah, and he's he's not behaving like Batman in that in that kind mm -hmm. of movie. He's he's being ruthless. He's bending his code. He's, he's definitely shooting like, missiles at human beings. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like the Thomas Wayne, Damian Wayne, grown up Batman version yeah. of it. But this is like true to Batman levels of you know characterization. And for them to strike that level of imposing presence and fear using that version of Batman, it speaks to like. It's very, very encouraging for me, and I'm sure it's the same for you as well. Well, absolutely, because so much of what makes Batman cool as as a hero is that, like, he doesn't, like, his special powers are gadgets and intimidation. Like, he, mm. he scares his foe, like, he scares henchmen into bending to his will. Like, he's so, he, like, the intimidation game is very important to that character, and we don't really get to see that a lot on the big screen. But, like, if... For sure. Like, I, I distinctly remember that moment in uh, Batman Begins when they're on the docks and the, the thug screams, where are you? And he's just like, here, and then gone. Like, I'm like, yeah. that's Batman to me. Like, the guy who gets you before you even realize it, and all along you're terrified. Yeah, exactly. That's the one that I like as opposed to the swear to me version of Batman, <laughs> where it's like, you shouldn't be screaming in someone's face, swear to me. No. You should be like you know, from the shadows, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's various things that kind of like, it's if you haven't seen the trailer, um, make sure you watch it a couple times because there are a bunch of things that happen there's in there. There's so much. Yeah, um, and we don't want to over kind of uh, expose that stuff and speak at length. I, just to briefly touch on things, there's the, 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 the riddles that constantly are coming up. The main one being if around the phrase, if you are justice, Please do not lie. What is the price for your blind eye? I love that they're sticking with the Riddler doing rhymes and mm -hmm. actual riddles. Um, and it's also on a on a card that um, Gordon finds. Um, they're on, the idea they're of, on greeting cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the idea of a mystery that's on, like, and he's actually testing. And the greeting cards also have, like, symbols on them, which yeah. presumably, yeah, he'll need to figure out. Um, that's really cool. Uh, then there's, like, the... The actual we brief, talk, talk briefly about the, his ride, which just looks like a standard car that he's just souped up to a ridiculous degree. If you told me that they borrowed that from a Fast and Furious movie, I'd be like, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, like for sure. Uh, there's the cave, um, Ooh, yeah. which looks to be like like we didn't get a a, a extended look at. It. We got more of a glimpse at it, mm -hmm. but it it feels less cave like than previous versions of it. It, it looks like it's like more natural it, it makes a lot more sense in the way that it's right. uh, created and then obviously one other thing that we want to touch on is alfred is there played by andy circus um don't get to see him but we get to hear him mm -hmm. um what did you think of the brief appearance uh audio appearance of andy circus as alfred um i mean there is no batman without alfred in my book um michael goff from the original movies is still He'll, he'll be my favorite Alfred for the rest of my life. Mm. Uh, but, like, I like that, honestly, Andy Circuit. like, yes, this is a young Batman. I like that that means we're getting a younger Alfred. Like, right. the, the hallmark of Alfred, he's just always kind of been this... Uh, Jeremy Irons, definitely not as much uh, in the 
Affleck movies, but like Alfred's always just been this older guy who's there to help Bruce along. I like Andy Serkis isn't that old. Like I like mm. I like that it's a younger Alfred. That's a that's a fun twist. Yeah, I'm interested to see how what kind of demeanor he has with uh, Bruce and back and forth because you have the various phases. Like we mentioned that Jeff Johns Earth One version, and he was very much like Army Alfred trying to beat in the lessons mm -hmm. that he learned and train um, uh, Bruce Wayne into being Batman by like very militaristic styles. Which is very much kind of along the lines of the Alfred we got on the TV show Gotham. It was very yeah. much, it was, a, it was a very angry militaristic man making a child train to be a soldier. Yeah, and then on the other end of the spectrum we have the like almost to a fault fatherly Alfred where he will voice his concerns but when his child like puts up a fight he will back down mm -hmm. and and almost like let him do what he wants it feels like we might have something in between here because his 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 kind of delivery of his line felt quite sarcastic like he yeah. calls him like you're becoming quite the celebrity <laughs> it felt almost like he was ribbing him for it yeah. and it's kind of i get the feeling that this is going to be more like a moral compass situation in a more like direct way i expect maybe this is off base but my prediction is like of all the characters um andy circus might have a larger role than we expect um it feels like what it would be it feels like it would be wild to have andy circus in the movie and not use him as much as possible um so i, I like reckon, that, i'm excited to see him i like that he's in it he's not just mocapping another character like yes yeah let andy I mean, circus you, act i mean he could i mean who yeah. knows he's also bruce yeah, wayne's he, dog I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> or like Killer Croc suddenly appears. And <laughs> oh, you're like, that would be great. Oh, of course, yeah, that would be pretty good, like in the next movie. But yeah, um, that's the trailer. As we said earlier, like uh, we've just touched on some highlights, mm -hmm. but you should really watch it and give it a, a, a go through it yourself with a fine tooth comb. There's a lot to kind of take out from it. And, I, um, I, and then, I do feel it is important to note that like there is so much in this trailer. They've only shot 25% of the movie. Yeah, it's been shut yeah. down all so, summer because of COVID, and they're getting right, they're gearing up to go back into production. But like, mm -hmm. all this footage we got is just a quarter of the movie. I yeah, I, I can't. It's yeah, it's gonna be. I'm I haven't been this confident in a DC movie in a long time, um, in a DC Batman movie. Mm. Um, Joker, J Joker's the last probably. Uh, success story out of them um, so I'm excited I want to give a special shout out to Robert Pattinson who appeared on on the actual event and just either just not interested in being there like I, Robert Pattinson I love the th I love the story of Robert Pattinson post Twilight where he's actually revealed that he's just super chill he's super and chill super and, nice. a, and a great actor yeah he's and really a great good actor. at things exactly. I'm like what's happening and he was here and I was like, he's very casual. And then my brain went, he's c casual to the point where he might be high. Like he was <laughs> like, I got, I got nothing to say. And he's like, Matt Reeves, you wanna, but that was great. Um, and then Matt Reeves did come on. And is there anything that you want to touch upon that Matt Reeves discussed? We kind of folded it into the conversation here. One thing that I really liked was um, the discussion around how Gothamites react to him. Um, we were most familiar with people treating Batman as a sign of hope, but one of the most interesting wrinkles of the year one slash year two early days career Batman stories are Gotham treats and, and its people treats him as as much of a villain as everyone else. Like they are unfamiliar with him. They don't yet know what he's about. He hasn't established a reputation or a history of being their savior. So I'm interested in how that's portrayed. Um, was how did you feel about that and was there anything else that matt reeves talked about that really stuck out to you um i i, I actually found that really interesting because honestly yeah if if i live in los angeles if on the i turn on the news and it's like oh a dude dresses a bat killed a bunch of guys like tonight or crippled a bunch of people tonight i'm like that's not a good guy i i, <laughs> I don't i don't understand what's going on here also where do we live uh, but so yeah i like i like the idea that like they shouldn't be quick to trust him that is i think that that's a very good piece of the story to tell. I also love that Matt Reeves said specifically regarding the Riddler murders, because he reiterated again and again, this is not a Batman origin story. We've seen it so many times, we do not need to see it again. Um, he, so he reiterated that like the Riddler murders sort of tell the story, the history of Gotham in a way, and like open that up more and open that up more to Bruce. I'm really... 
it really makes me want to know, like, who are these people that he's he's offing that are so central to whatever Gotham is? Yeah, and jumping off that point that you just made about what Matt said, like it, the this history of Gotham being told could feed back into why Riddler treats him as a liar. Because one of the things that Matt Reeves said was like, it's also about Bruce discovering where he fits into the history of Gotham, mm -hmm. and where his family fits into the history of Gotham. So it could be that the things that the Riddler is trying to expose aren't necessarily just about Bruce, but what his family has done to get the Waynes to where they are now. That could be the thing that he wants Bruce to realize, mm -hmm. and it and and also the world to know, and the Go and Gotham to know. So as uh, even based on our like amateur analysis of what the trailer offers like there's so many layers happening here oh there's so much i can't believe that i have yeah. to wait a year to see this thing exactly oh. narratively it feels dense it feels interesting um i will say uh, if you want to read up more about it meg has done a, a really great and comprehensive breakdown of the trailer on gamespot.com uh, if you want to read that um, and we've got a bunch of other news stories about the batman the movie and also we've got a story about the gcpd um a spin-off that uh, matt reeves is also working on if that isn't enough batman for you the fandom Never. has delivered in spades we've got uh wb montreal's game gotham knights Ooh. has been revealed bat it family looks, come on it it looks so good oh, like God. it looks awesome um yeah co-op game so we've got gameplay for that up on the gamespot youtube channel as well as on uh, gamespot.com and if that wasn't enough <laughs> if that wasn't enough we can kill also, batman yeah you can kill the batman with rocksteady's game suicide squad um which is all about killing the justice league and if you want even more we've got information on aquaman 2 we've <sighs> got uh, the Snyder Cut of Justice League, there's uh, Black Adam, I literally cannot recall all the things because there's so oh, much of it. Wonder Woman 84. They, Wonder Woman. They, the Flash TV show hasn't shot its new season, released a trailer for the new season. Like, I, they're, <laughs> like DC fandom is what everything that Comic-Con at home was not. It is just yeah. filled with everything we could possibly want. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be this good, no. but I'm glad that it has been. It feels energizing. Um, oh, yeah, so. and t they also announced that Titans is going to Gotham City next season, and you're going to get Red Hood and Barbara Gordon and Scarecrow. So, like, it really, like, because I believe we're on an anniversary, we're coming on a big Batman anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, there is yeah. plenty. There is so much for you to check out, and you can do that on GameSpot.com, you can do that on YouTube.com forward slash GameSpot, or here on GameSpot Universe. In the meantime, you can find me hanging out on Twitter. I'm at Tamor H. Chris, what are you on Twitter? Uh, I am at Chris Hayner. Come and talk to us about Batman. We'll gladly chat. Uh, oh, you. yes, we will. Uh, we will. To the cows, come home. To the bats, come <laughs> home. <laughs> All right, take it easy, everyone. Bye.